Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're going to go over the general science exam for the ASVAB military placement exam. I got 20 practice problems here that'll give you an idea of the kind of problems you're going to be looking at. Uh, what I'd highly recommend you do is have a notebook out, take notes, watch the video, pause the video, do the problem, unpause the video, and then watch how I do the solution. If you have any questions at all, please post them in the comments. Um, best thing of course would be to actually watch science videos and learn the science even take a science course to do the best you can but um, this will help give you an idea of what some of the science problems are going to look like all right let's get started number one neutrons are positive negative charges none of the above pause the video take your shot neutrons are chargeless and this kind of makes sense even if you don't know the correct answer because neutrons base of the word is neutral Neutral means neither positive nor negative. So the correct answer is C, chargeless. Electrons are negatively charged, protons are positively charged, and neutrons are chargeless or neutral. Number two, a light bulb consumes 90 kilojoules of energy in an hour. What is that power in watts? 25, 30, 35, 40. Correct answer is A, 25, because 90 Kilojoules, kilo in metric is a thousand. A thousand joules is the 90,000. The conversion factor is 3,600. You do 90,000 divided by 3,600 to get the correct answer, 25, 25 watts. Three, which is the correct formula to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius? Um, well, this is a conversion of, um, given a metric measurement in Celsius, convert it to Fahrenheit. I think that's actually worded a little wrong. The correct answer is C, Fahrenheit is equal to 9 fifths Celsius plus 32. And the way you would do that is you would take the amount of Celsius degrees, let's say it's 30 degrees outside in Celsius, take that, plug it in here, multiply by 9, get that answer 270, divide that by 5, you know, whatever that's going to be, 50 or so, and then add 32 to it to get your Fahrenheit degrees. So 30 would be about 80, 85 degrees or somewhere around there. Number four, the value of the acceleration due to gravity is 8.91, 9.18, 9.81, 10.9 meters per second squared. This is just a number you need to know uh, from a physics class. Correct answer is answer C, 9.81 meters per second squared. Number five, a runner weighing 70 kilograms is running at a speed of five meters per second. What is, is his kinetic energy? 800 joules, 875, 981, or 1,000 joules. I notice everything's metric. Do this problem the best you can, then watch how I solve it. Correct answer is B, 875 joules. And kinetic energy is one half mass times vol uh, velocity squared, which is going to be the one half, 0.5 is a decimal, the mass, 70 kilograms, the velocity squared, the five, five squared, so I have 25 times 70 times a half, which gives me the 875 joules. Number six, how many chromosomes do humans inherit from each parent? Uh, this is just one of those numbers you have to know from a genetics class. Correct answer is A, 23. Maybe you heard of 23 and me. That's where it's from. Each cell in the human body has 23 pairs of chromosomes, 46 total. Half come from the mom, the other half come from the father. Okay, number seven, the products of photosynthesis are sugar and carbon dioxide, water and carbon dioxide, sugar and oxygen, water and oxygen. So uh, go ahead and answer this question, unpause the video, and then I'll show you how to do it. If you don't know the answer to this one, well, you know trees are good, and either it's going to be, you know, in this pair or this pair, carbon dioxide's bad, so it can't be A or B, so you know trees only produce oxygen. Do they produce water and oxygen or sugar and oxygen? Well, water and oxygen doesn't make that much sense because they consume water. So you know the correct answer has to be C, sugar and oxygen. You kind of work your way through those answers through a process of elimination if you didn't know the answer. Okay, number A, go ahead and read through this and come up with your answer. Pause the video and I'll show you the correct answer. I don't know if I could actually even pronounce all those words. All right, correct answer is C, 
nucleus. Number nine, go ahead and read through that problem. Pause the video, do the best you can with it. And then this solution right here, if you don't know the answer, you can eliminate choices that don't make sense, like fungi, like mushrooms growing. That doesn't really have anything to do with this. If you can eliminate one possible answer, now your chances, if you had a guess, is, is out of three, not out of four, so your probabilities go up. Correct answer is B. Number 10, which of the following eats both plants and animals, carnivores, herbivores, omnivores, decomposers? Well, I mean, if I just had to take a random guess, the top three um, all have the same ending, so I know they have similarities, so I can eliminate D, and it says which eat both. Well, herbs are plants, carne is meat, omni is all. So the correct answer is C, omnivores. If you understand the roots of the words a little bit, you could do a lot better on these style of tests. Number 11, which of the following causes acid rain? Correct answer, C, sulfur dioxide. 12, what is the state in which both the reactants and products are present in concentrations that have no further tendency to change with time? Pause the video, get correct answer B, equilibrium state. That kind of makes sense. An equal sign means balanced, uh, and that's what we're looking for. No more change, no further change. It's going to be in a balanced state or equilibrium. Number 13, when one substance replaces another in a compound, the reaction is called double replacement, decomposition, addition, displacement. Correct answer D, displacement. And you know, even if you don't know the answer to this, you see replacement, displacement, they're pretty similar. So I'd probably eliminate B and C, and if I had a guess, guess between A and D, but the correct answer is D, displacement. A displacement reaction occurs when a more reactive element displaces or pushes out a less reactive element. So most of these problems are really about vocab. Number 14, the process in which a solid directly converts to vapor without becoming a liquid is known as condensation, evaporation, sublimation, freezing. Correct answer, C, sublimation. Sublimation is a direct transition of a substance from a solid to a gas phase. Um, so again, it's really just a word definition. It's really learning vocabulary words. Number 15, an acid and the base react to produce water and? Correct answer is A, salt. An acid and a base react to produce water and salt. 16, what body in the solar system is also known as an icy mud ball? Asteroid, comet, meteorite, meteoroid. Correct answer is B, comet. Again, vocabulary word. 17, which of the following rocks is the result of a chemical process? Quartzite, granite, sandstone, or coal? Correct answer, quartzite. Quartzite is a hard, non-foliated, metamorphic rock that was originally pure quartz sandstone. Sandstone is converted into quartzite through heating and pressure. Number 18, the rings of Saturn are comprised primarily of clusters of small moons, gases, asteroids, ice crystals. Correct answer is D, ice crystals. Two more problems. Uh, if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. It's Colfax Math. Uh, if this is helpful, hit the like button and share it with anybody else you might know who's studying to do well on the ASVAB or any standardized math or science test. Number 19, as part of the water cycle, water evaporates and enters the atmosphere. What happens to that water vapor that has entered the atmosphere? Correct answer is C, condensation. Last one, 20, which is the largest among the terrestrial planets? Mercury, Venus, Earth, Jupiter? Correct answer is Earth. A terrestrial planet 
telluric planet or rocky planet is a planet that is composed primarily of silicates, rocks, or metals. Earth is the largest of the terrestrial planets. All right, well, I sure hope that was helpful. Again, this is an overview of some of the problems you might encounter uh, on the science portion of the ASVAB military placement exam. The best way to study is really study science vocabulary. I mean, we go, we're all over the place here from earth science to chemistry to physics, but it's a general overview of your knowledge of science and vocabulary is a big part of that. Okay, thank you for watching.